in 3D Studio Max, in the slate editor, when you're applying a material or a map that has an alpha channel, instead of set, saving two separate maps, one diffuse and one alpha as JPEG, rather save one PNG, you can then shift copy this PNG and just check the alpha box. And that means every time you save your file, both channels will update. To help selection in very complex scenes, it's useful to remember that you can toggle between turning off geometry, turning off cameras, turning off lights and turning off splines and you can do that by hitting shift G, shift C, shift L or shift S. Max has a render to map function in its slate editor. If you are compiling complex materials as a diffuse channel or for that matter any other channel, it is resource heavy. My recommendation would be to use Max's built-in render to map function plug that back into the diffuse channel and it'll free up a lot of memory and resource if you've got a complicated file with complicated materials. In the material editor you can actually open a Photoshop file through the material editor. If you navigate to that map file as a PSD, right click on it, you have the option to open its location or open the actual file. This will save you a lot of time navigating in Windows Explorer. Modifier stacks can very quickly complicate objects, but you can actually collapse a modifier stack without collapsing an object to an editable poly. When you collapse an object to an editable poly you will break the instance. But if you right click on the modifier stack and hit collapse to, you'll collapse your stack without breaking an instance to another object. When you have a lot of the same or similar models in a scene it's useful to use the batch rename tool. Check numbered and this will distinguish between common name but individual numbering for objects in your scene. Selection sets in Max is very useful. The reason it's useful is it allows you to bypass the group function. The more groups you have in your scene, the more complex your scene gets and the more resource intense your scene gets. I simply select whatever I want in a specific selection set, type that into the name of the selection set and then hit affirm enter. This confirms your selection set where you can later add on or remove objects from that set, but it is much quicker than grouping and ungrouping. There are two different selection modes in 3D Studio Max, window and crossing. Crossing will select everything that crosses the cursor or the selection area, whereas window will only select whatever is fully enclosed by the selection barrier. This is really great and saves you from picking objects individually. Not everyone knows about the batch render function in 3D Studio Max and it's an incredibly useful tool that allows you to get up for 10 minutes, go have a coffee, go and rest your eyes while 10 or 15 or more renders are running consecutively. It's very easy to set up as well. If you want to apply one material to one object but it have that material instance through to all the instances, Make sure that you check the Propagate Materials to Instances button in Max. This is a very useful tool that you save a lot of selection time not having to select everything you want to apply materials to.